This video is just a short range conversation about different optic setups we all consider when designing a rifle that can be used for both day and night vision. Hollywood and I brought out some of our setups in hopes to save you from spending your hard earned money on less than optimal arrangements. Up first is your standard micro red dot on a Geisley 193 mount. This is about the most common setup people out there have. An EOTech EXPS3 on a Unity riser, an AccuPower LPVO with an RMR Arasaka combo without the high spacer, an Aimpoint T2 on a Unity 2.26 riser paired with the Unity inline magnifier mount, a 1 to 6 AccuPoint and a Geisley mount paired with a Reptila top mounted RMR adapter on the rear ring. Of course, this can be swapped to the front ring if you'd like. Another AccuPoint 1 to 6 with a rear mounted RMR on a high spacer Arasaka mount tucked in using the inward rotation to keep it slimline. A 3.5X TA11A cog with the slightly longer eye relief paired with a rear top mounted RMR. And finally, a simple hollow sun red dot on a Reptila mount with a side flip 3X magnifier. There is one bonus setup that we'll try at the end that I forgot was in the car for a future video. This video isn't too in depth, but it might help visualize some considerations before you invest your loot. This equipment isn't cheap, but we just happen to have some of these builds all together for some new shooters. So I'll let Hollywood share his thoughts. Yeah. So go ahead and uh, position the stock where you think you would, and then uh, don't bang it. So do you think you can, can? You think you'd actually see? You're a little higher. Like that's the thing though with these. Is like with without it turned on, I can't tell exactly what I'd be looking through. So pull it, back, push it forward, like pretend you can extend your stock or something, maybe to get you some space. So even with an extended stock. So uh, up, drill it. Keep your head forward. Okay, so You're now I'll just take the unity mount off, real quick. Now I'll uh, do it. Bingo. And you can see too, the EOTech's pretty far forward. So it's not a matter of, well, if you just put the EOTech more forward, you can put the magnifier. Well, yeah, I guess you could, but I mean, realistically, I don't keep the magnifiers on my guns anyway. It's just too much weight you don't need on there. If you think you're going to need it, keep it in a pouch, man. You know, have it in your bag, have it on your belt, whatever. Have it in a pouch, slap it on real quick. That's the beauty of quick, quick disconnect. Otherwise, you don't need all the weight on your fucking rifle. But yes, this, honestly, this and the T2, you guys are going to see here in just a second. These are the two probably best as far as like acquisition. Let's try uh, what happens with uh, duels and a forward offset red dot. So I'll already go ahead and note, cause I know already it's gonna bump no matter what I do. So even with the stock as far back as I can get it. Now the problem is with the offset is twofold. Number one, it's clearing the optic here, the LPVO that's causing me to not gonna be able to get a good picture through this offset. Number two, the problem isn't necessarily, the second problem is that if you're looking about having a laser aiming module on the front here, that laser aiming module is already gonna have an offset to the up and right of your bullet impact. Now you can, you can zero them together at a certain distance, but let's pretend you've zeroed them at 100 yards and you're gonna go do a quick up drill at like 10 yards or whatever. So you're pulling it back an awful lot of distance. You're gonna have number one, height over bore fighting against you. Then number two, you're gonna have the offset of the laser fighting against you. So to run a 45 degree offset with a laser that's already not directly in line with your barrel or your bore, it's just gonna be a lot of remembering where every hold is. And you can say, well, I know all that or I remember all that or whatever. Good for you. I've been shooting a while, I can't fucking remember that shit. So, you know, it's a struggle always when you're trying to get behind something like this, even with it sitting at like just a laser aiming module pretending this what this was, a d-ball or whatever if i want to do something through like a viking tactics barricade and i need to get into like an unconventional position and go complete you know urban prone or something like that shooting it i now have to remember in relation to my laser wherever i'm seeing it out on my target where my bullet impact is going to be and that can be a whole 360 degree circle depending on the angle you're aiming at so 45 degree offsets really are not ideal for night vision stuff in general what about an articulating nod up in the top so articulating nods are cool and they're a little bit more helpful. Um, Draw up. And the, the thing about like a, an articulating nod is you can run just one of them flip down, which may actually make that usable. But even so, like if I'm just running this guy down, I could probably get behind this 45 degree offset, but it still doesn't deal with the second problem that I mentioned in this set. And this, that's that again, this not being in line with the bore, 
presents some problems, um, which, you know, it, I guess it presents it in any situation, you know, it, even during broad daylight, if I'm trying to do Viking tactics, barricades or whatever with it, it's still going to be kind of tough to get that angle right, mm -hmm. you know, depending on which slot I have to shoot through. But with nods, it's just one more layer of shit that just adds too much to it. What about uh, this unity? So. You don't technically gotta put that in there. I don't care. So this, whole different story. This works out actually really well in terms of if I'm trying to get right behind this guy, it's very easy to do. I kind of camp my rifles a little bit anyway because I just like them. They, they sit better in my, in my shoulder pocket that way because I've got you know, circus build or whatever. But basically, this works. This works very well. It's very intuitive. It comes up correctly at the right the right height for me. I'm generally a 1.93 guy in all aspects, but the 2.26s here actually have grown on me quite a bit. This actually works out okay, as does the EOTech on the, the Unity Riser, which brings you to 2.26. So both of these should be the same height over bore roughly where you're hitting, your eyes are hitting the actual reticle. I know they don't look exactly lined up, but they're, they're, they're close enough for argument that they're both like right on each other once you get them lined up. Yep. So 2.26 really is a, a good thing for night vision. It's a little high to be running without night vision, but it works. I can still make it work. All right, well, let's, where did the forward canter? Let's try this Reptilla with the top. So I wanted to love this. In the uh, rear position. So I wanted to love this setup. I wanted to, because I'll tell you, when you're looking through nods with this guy, this piggybacked RMR, hollow sum, whatever, actually is correct height-wise. Really, it really works out. It works out nicely. Problem is though, look what I'm doing here. Now I can move my stock further back, but still, this is as far back as the stock will go, and I'm having this issue. Now, I could move this further forward and that probably would alleviate that issue. And that's gonna be a personal preference. I did not on this particular one because I didn't wanna move my mount bridging across to my rail. I'm not a fan of bridging a, ra uh, a mount of any kind from the upper receiver itself to the you know rail it's attached to. That's just asking for problems. So... Do you think that could be used as a stopping point to bang your nod on the back of the LPVO so you get a guaranteed height and you're not wobbling above and below? So you could <coughs> look at it that way. Here's my problem with that. Um, if you're running articulating duels, the problem with articulating duels is the way that, you know, they shut off if you articulate them out of the way because they, they have a contact that meets together once they're articulated down that makes them actually turn on. These are NVGs. These don't articulate. So they don't have that problem. If I'm running articulating duels, what happened to me an awful lot of times in my night vision course was I would be bringing the rifle up to do a drill and I would tap one of my nods and it would just move it enough to disarticulate it. And I would lose the vision out of that, that tube until I moved it back down. Now you could get ways around that. You could um, take a rubber band once you got them set right and really just kind of stick them together with a rubber band at which point they wouldn't disarticulate if you hit it coming up to aim. But that also means you're going to have to be stuck with the position that those nods are articulated in if you like stick them together like that. So all in all, maybe if this, you know, if I instead got the SPR mount that moves everything further forward, that might actually fix this issue. I do like the height that this sits at. So for reference, this is the Reptilla ROF that sits at the 12 o'clock position on top of the Geisley or Reptilla also makes a mount that's similar to this Geisley. And I'm using the five millimeter riser under it. So there's a five millimeter and a 10 millimeter riser height. I'm using the five millimeter under it. 
and it fits perfectly. And it clears, as you can see through it, it clears the tops of your turret caps, which is really the biggest important issue. So if you're going to get one of these Reptila Geisley combo things, consider the height of your caps here. I don't know what the height on these AccuPoints are, but I'll tell you at the very least, get the five millimeter riser. You'll be happy you did. Why'd you choose the rear instead of the front? Uh, honestly, no great reason. Okay. There's no particular reason, but... Maybe weight, keep it balanced to the rear, if anything. Uh, it, honestly, the, the amount of thought that went into it was very minimal. Okay. So I can't sit here and say I chose it for one so reason or another. So you could also, on the Unity flip-down magnifier, you could actually bump your articulation connection as well. Exactly. On PBS-31s, Or DTNVGs or DTNVSs yep. that articulate. Yeah, you could do that. Um, honestly, that's not such a huge deal. Having bought the RMVGs, I'm not sad that I did because they are far more robust than an articulating set, but articulating sets do have their advantages. My problem with articulating sets is, again, if I'm doing this shit, I don't want to lose a nod. Also, if I drop that articulating set, you know, you drop these guys out here in the gravel, bet they still turn on just fine. You drop an articulating set, if you hit one of the small pieces just right, you'll lose the ability to articulate that nod, and then it needs to go back to your respective, you know, uh, shop you bought it from to get repaired. So they are not anywhere near as robust i don't care what anyone says now right. when they figure out how to make some rmvgs that articulate i'll have them because articulation is cool so instead of uh forward canted let's see uh what it's like with this rear it looks like it's going to hit the knot as well it will but let's see and you can maybe put your stock back but what that does is wears you the f out my so, optic is further forward are you running uh, yeah you're further forward so you're you're kind of the uh example here where this would work now i could do the same thing what you are running is one of the yankee hill half inch risers which to be honest guys for those of you watching this they're like less than 50 bucks brand new and they're going to bring you to like a, if you put this uh a lower one-third optic of any kind on top of this little yankee hill half inch riser you're going to get like a 2.1 rise or whatever. It's pretty good height for all around. In so, between a Unity and in between a 193. Exactly. And it works really well. So if you're not, you know, feeling the whole, I like the Unity stuff, but if you're not feeling paying ridiculous money for stuff, this is kind of the poor man's way to do it. And it's not really one of those just as good kind of situations. So let me it show actually how I works. bridge that handguard gap real quick. So the Yankee Hill does not touch the handguard. Now, I'll go ahead and show me that this doesn't hit if the LPVO or the canted. It's tapping a little bit there. What Just about the canted RMR? So that's what I'm doing now is I'm on the canted. I'm aiming through the canted. Do you think you could uh, get that to work? I still wouldn't want to fuck with it. Like, even if I moved it this far forward, I still don't think this would be something I would fuck with. Maybe we'll try it under nods. If you got it, like, two slots further, it would probably work. But uh, again, you still have an offset dot here, so... I go one forward. So, I mean, you could go one forward, like, but again, that also requires you to run your stock like this. I don't run my stocks as far out. My, just, my arms just aren't that long. So I run it closer. So and, you're still hitting a little. So I'm still going to hit. So I would have to make, to make this setup work. And for those of you guys looking too, I'm running these about as far back as I can get them. I tend to run iPro under my nods. So I'm running this about as far back as I'm going to be able to, to get them. So it's not a matter of me having this out too far or an adjustment with my uh, Wilcox mount or anything like that. This is just one of those things where like, the reality of it is, is there's a lot of shit out there you can buy. There's a lot of cool stuff, but there's no perfect setup. Everything's gonna have a trade off in some degree. If you're someone who really likes these 45 degree-ish offsets, like you're all about it, you can make that work with knobs, that's fine, but that's just a lot of shit to remember if you're shooting in unconventional positions. And you know, being realistic, most of us are just civilians, stuff like that. You're probably not going to be in some big crazy gunfight where you got to get in all kinds of weird positions, but you know, we're not bulletproof, man. So if rounds are flying in my direction, I want to be as small of a target as possible, which means I might have to get in some funky ass position where the only thing I can do is aim from more like one or two different positions. I'm not going to want to put myself in a situation where I have three different holds to remember based on the way I'm canting the gun and what my laser aiming module and shit are doing. It's just, 12 o'clock is really where stuff needs to be if you're trying to use night vision. It just needs to well, sit Well, let's there. try. This is the longer eye relief TA-11, so you don't have to be as close technically. But the ACOG still kind of sits back. I have this one back a little further, which means it's going to force you to put the rifle out, which I don't have the full collapse or extendable stock. But this is the uh, top-mounted piggyback RMR. Let me see. The nods will probably hit this as well. They will, but... So, for reference... That doesn't extend, it's a fixity. 
I don't understand people that like these. That's because it's high AR. Which forces you to what? Extend your arms out, which nobody can do that. So hold that sucker way out and your stock wouldn't be in your shoulder. You know what I mean? It's the only way you'd be able to, exactly. Yeah, this, that, so that's not gonna work. Nope. So if your interest with running night vision is to be able to passively aim, which is becoming more and more important because more and more people have nods, you are not going to, you're going to want to carefully consider what you're doing here with your mounts. Or we may need the forward mounted red dots on the ACOG models that have the... Well, they can, but forward. even, you're pretty far forward here, right? That's the purpose of this mount, you can is go, to be able to get forward. No, this ACOG has longer eye relief. I can actually put it further forward if I wanted just to get good eye relief. But you, look how forward you'd have to put it. You exactly. would have to get this guy probably about where this crease is connecting these pieces. You'd have to have it starting here roughly yep. to be able to miss the nod. Exactly. Even with a stock that like extended out here. So... The last thing we need to check because ACOG's rough with piggyback for nods. You have to hold it way out. This doesn't fold down like the unity mount. It actually folds off to the side. If you were to use your red dot, are you hitting your nod on a flip to the side magnifier like you did with the unity? So. Uh, extend the stock out maybe where you like it. I mean, even tight, it works. So you can see the first things first. Even tight, it works. Now there is some touching here on the top right here. I'm yep. balancing my right lens on top of it. But if I extend even like halfway, which you know, you're still going to touch it a little. Do you? Would you consider it's a good reference point to know you're on red dot? Uh, I don't think so. Um, I don't think so. Like the my reference point for knowing I'm on red dot is going to be seeing my dot, right? Yep. Because um, that's the weird thing about night vision too. Like it's 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 a little funky when you're looking through this shit and looking through your dots on it. Try all the way back, extended. So I'm still kind of tapping here. So the kind of takeaway from this is, is if you're going to run nods for passive aiming, you're probably, if you're going to run a set of duels, I mean, you could technically run like a articulating set with one of them up and one of them down or just a PBS 14. Yep. You know, th th that may be doable. Or but take the magnifier off. Take the magnifier off, which like I said earlier, there's no reason to have that on right now. And if you're, if you're running a nighttime scenario, looking through nods with any kind of magnification on an optic or a magnifier in front of it really doesn't work out very well. I mean, you've got multiple different diopters here now with this, with this, and then your nods. It just doesn't work. Magnified optics under nods are kind of a, a no-go. So I wouldn't have this on then. If it's a nighttime operation, I'm not gonna be running this magnifier. Again, have a little pouch in your bag or on your belt, throw it in there. Um, you know, keep it. I'm not saying don't run 3X mags. It's just without this sitting here, this would actually be a lot better. This is a lower one third, by the way. It's not quite as tall as that Geisley. No, no shit. Yeah, I can tell just by looking at it. Okay. It's good. Reptilia makes good stuff. But yeah. All so right. for me, the winners really. Let's say what the optimal NV setup. The really the winners are these two guys here. The Unities. I do like, or even a 193. I do like the Geisley 193 or Reptilia 193. This this does work. It is fairly intuitive. Like I don't mind it. So if you go between 193 and the 226, you kind of can't lose. They're all going to work fine. Um, it's going to become more a little bit of preference than anything else, but they work. They all work, and, and those really are ideal. off. Exactly. So, and you pretty much have to pop this one off. The yeah. side flips are okay with nods to leave them on an emergency. And, and this the one last one, one. It will, yep. It'll have to come off. Even if you run it super far forward, it'd have to come off. So this is supposed to get you the height for nods to make it better. But the problem is, is even fully extended, which pretty much, although, so hold it out and forward, yeah, it'd be decent. But the problem is, is no contact with shoulder or body armor. So I suppose if you were running... body armor. Right, so if you were running a longer stock, like maybe if you got one of the old school... That, nope, that's about an A2 fix, tall fully is extended it? right there, yep. So, yeah, there's not a lot of ways. I mean, I suppose you could always put like a longer buffer tube on here or something. You could always go with a Voltor or something, but you're trying to make shit work that just isn't going to work. Again, the ACOG's a magnified optic. Yeah. It's just not going to work well under nods, man. And here's the main thing. The cram spacer everybody wants to put on. Hold that sucker up. The cram spacer sets the ACOG back even further, which literally you'd have to either rest your nods and work through a front red dot mount or uh, get rid of the cram spacer. Yeah, you're pretty much hitting your nods. And again, if you have articulating duels, what's going to happen is it's going to hit this corner and it's going to disarticulate the right one. And what's going to happen is once that disarticulates, it doesn't have to disarticulate more than a few millimeters and that contact will lose its 
its contact with the, the actual housing and you will lose that, that nod until you, until you push it back. So is that really something you want? I mean, if you're bringing your rifle up for a quick shot, do you want to fuck with the possibility that you lose one, of, one half of your night vision already that you have to correct now? I don't. Very good point. So, and again, magnified optics with, with, uh, with nods are just, they're just a no-go. And you basically need, this is boiling down to a front-mounted red dot. It's good because if anything, you could use the rear of the ACOG as a resting shelf for the nod while you passively aim through a top forward mounted red dot. Correct. That would be okay. Or cant it to the side, which we can do, but it ends up into the same exact issue we have with canted red dots on LPVOs, just like that. So. Some of these options sound good in theory, but in practice may not be optimal. Yes, we can make them all work, but they should be working for you, not the other way around. Each of these options will be talked about in depth for future videos. Until then, thanks for watching.